What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I'm Reggie Bryant and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth. And I provide simple, realistic ways to achieve your financial goals in today's economy. Today, we're going to jump into what I believe to be the best way to budget your money, not just budgeting your money, but mastering your budget. So I made a similar video a couple of years ago and I was rewatching it and I was like, man, I need to nail on this point a little bit more and I have a better spreadsheet to show you this time. So today what we're going to do is we're going to go to my laptop and I'm going to show you exactly how I'm filling this spreadsheet out in this example that we're using. This is all about the zero based budget. And by the end of this video, you'll see why this is the superior way to budget your money. By the way, if anybody wants this spreadsheet that I'm about to show you, you can get it for free by clicking the link in my description. And my hope is that by the end of this video, you're able to one, get the spreadsheet and two, start applying it to your life. All right, we're gonna jump straight into it right now. Okay, so we're in my laptop right now, as you can see. So this is gonna be split up into three different sections. So you have income at the top, expenses in the middle, savings at the bottom. So as you can see, there's numbers already filled out for us, but basically what I went and did was I looked at the national average income and then it was super high. So I went more accurate and looked at the median income across the US and that ended up being 75,000. So when I say national median income, I'm talking about household income. So 75,000, when you look at the tax bracket that that's in, uh, this is what I came up with as far as what their take home pay probably is per month if we're talking about 75 grand a year. So when you're looking at 48, 48 per month, and that's split in two. So, so when you look at that in half, that's obviously $2,424 per every other week. And I, and the reason I encourage you to look at this as cut in half, not just how much you make per month. This right here is simply the budget planner sheet right so this is just planning your budget and i always say to plan for worst case scenario so this number right here it doesn't account for overtime it doesn't account for really any side hustles or anything like that at this time or even tax returns this is just purely looking at what you make from your job now if you do have a side hustle and you expect to make a certain amount you can put it up there but for the sake of this example this person does not have a side hustle and they are not expecting tax returns at this time maybe they'll do it later in april but for right now forty eight hundred and forty eight dollars is what they're getting per month so if you split that in half that's a more realistic way of looking at your monthly budget because everybody mostly everybody has a time of the month where they're basically in the negative or they're right at breaking even until the next paycheck comes Then when the next paycheck comes it's like okay i can ball out of control a little bit but this is a way to help you control your finances so so in this example you can see that the fixed expenses are already typed in for you and the ones that are not fixed the ones that are determined completely on you are left blank so this is how we're going to look at it right now so this bar at the top this is showing you the calculation so this is this number minus this number, right? So you have $1,748 still left to spend. So as Warren Buffett wisely said, do not save what is left after spending. Spend what is left after saving. That's what Warren Buffett said. That's what we're gonna do in this example. And this is how we can really make this zero-based budget go to your advantage. Because how many of us are like, okay, I have. 4,800 and blah, blah, blah. And this is what we're gonna do with it. And okay, then we're gonna save what's left. And you might find that you're not able to save that much because of it. So what we're gonna do in the most effective way possible is we're gonna do this. We're gonna say, okay, these are the expenses that I absolutely have. You're gonna find which half of the month is the part where you have the most money left over. So drop the mic on accident. Okay, so we're gonna start filling some of these other ones in, but first, it's okay to go to this side to the left and put which part of the month this comes out of. So the first half, we'll just put first and second just for the sake of this video. I'm gonna like time lapse this. Okay, so now that that is over with, uh, we can see that 
we have first here, first, first, and first, right? So as we can see, the heavier expenses are taken away right at the first half of the month, which basically means the first through the 15th. And if we decide to add this number up. So if you do the math and add up all the firsts, including, don't forget about giving because that's gonna be each check. So you have to divide this by two. But when you add all that up, the number of all your expenses are gonna be $2,584.50. So I'm gonna write that down so I do not forget about that number. Boom. This is just for the first half of the month now. That's going to leave you negative $160.50. And a lot of us are like that. So if you're looking at this from a perspective of month to month, yeah, it's going to look like, okay, well, I'm positive $500 or $600 or whatever your number is. But if you don't look at it from a two week perspective, that's when you can miss stuff like, oh, wait, after the first two weeks, I'm negative $160. So now we need to start thinking about what buffer do I need? You could say your buffer is $160.5, but things might come up. You might need to buy certain groceries. You might need to replace your pots and pans. You might end up spending more money than you think you will on the numbers that we have not yet identified based on our budget. And that's what we need to start thinking about. This is how to properly budget. You look at your fixed expenses that are extremely important, and then you look at the first half of the month. And obviously that's where we're negative. So if it were me, I'm looking at this, I would say I need a $300 buffer in my checking account and I would work on the second half of the month to create said buffer, put it in my checking account, keep it there and make sure I really don't touch it. So now if you have a $300 buffer, that means at the end of this, where you're negative 160, you should have a positive 140 or 139.5 to be exact. But that's what we need to think about. We also need to think about, even if I have a buffer, how much do I wanna give myself for groceries? And do I even need to think about eating out? And also, how much is gas gonna cost me? Do I need to add to my buffer? How is this gonna work? This is the critical thinking that it's gonna take. You only really need to do, you only really need to do this critical thinking once, like assuming your income doesn't change and assuming your expenses don't change. You do this one time, like, let's say you start this budget sheet in February. Well, guess what? You're set for the rest of the months once you figure this one thing out. That's why we're doing this exercise right now so you can figure it out. So anyway, now we're gonna do the second half and you'll find that in the second half of the month, we'll have a lot more money. So we're gonna go ahead and do the math. So the second half of the month, if we're looking just at fixed expenses is gonna be $482.50. So if you subtract that from 2424, you will have, let me put it down here, $1,941.50 right at your disposal. That's how much you'll have left to spend if we're just looking at half and half. And you'll find that if you take this number and add this number, which is a negative number, so you're basically 1941 minus 160, you will come up with this number at the top, which shows you that this number is accurate if we're just looking at the full month. But this is just like a, a zoom in of that showing that actually this is after the first couple of weeks and this is after the second couple of weeks. And that's how we determine this number up here. Now, if you're confused about the giving part, that's just me. That's how I do things. I tithe every month. So that's at least going to be 10% of every one of your paychecks. And so that's where I got this number from. And that's why that must be divided by two and added to each one of these. But anyway, going back to that Warren Buffett quote that I talked about a second ago, this is the part of the month where you apply that. Now, obviously the first part of the month, you really can't do that, not without losing yourself in the mix and going negative or even breaking even. You want to go from here. So now you wanna say, well, how much do I wanna save before it's time to spend money. Because yes, you're gonna have plenty of spending opportunity in these three categories. You might have more, but this is just an example. Um, if you decide to spend in these three categories, how far can you go? Well, what's gonna determine that is your priorities. So you might want to, your savings might look good. So maybe you wanna put 300 and keep it moving. My computer's lagging right now. I'll put it in the wrong month, I'm messing up. Apparently so is my computer, all this loading. Anyway, in your regular savings account, let's say you want to do 300. Boom, that's cool. 
and let's say in your emergency fund you want to put 400 cool 1048 still left to spend so let's say for your Roth IRA you want to do 500 I'm literally just choosing random numbers so twelve hundred of your twelve hundred dollars of your money is going to go into saving and you predetermine that at the top of this which means once you get your 1941 before you spend money on anything uh-uh my money's going here and this is where i always say automate your savings automate the money going into your roth ira and automate the money going into your emergency fund if you do that you will never miss on saving and you'll have $548 left. That's if you wanted to do it that way. But if you obviously wanted to, if you obviously know that you spend more than $548 on groceries like most people do, you can make the adjustment and say, ooh, well, let me get my money right first. Let me, let me only do $200 for my Roth IRA. It gives me some money back. That's $848 now. Okay, I feel more comfortable with that. Let's say, I know myself and I like to spend $600 on groceries. Cool. Now we can start thinking about Dave Ramsey's method of taking out $600 cash that you can have on hand for groceries so you don't keep interfering with your checking account and or your savings account so that you won't have to worry about going over. Because when you have a debit card, you really don't think about how much you swipe it and you might not even look at your groceries because you're like, it'll take forever to get to 600, but if you have cash, you'll know when things are getting a little tight. Let's say your gas is 100, boom. So in this case, if you absolutely wanted to have DoorDash or if you wanted to go out to eat, you know you have $148 to do so if we're going to zero this whole thing out. And obviously the goal is for this to be zero. That's why this turns green right here because now we have reached the goal of it being zero. Just know first half of the month, you're going to be negative. So you're going to create a buffer. Cool. That's what this is. This is that buffer that's going to be available in your savings account. Because like I said, your savings account looks good. So we're just going to keep an extra 300 there. So if we need to move it to our checking, we know we're going to be good to go. And that's going to be our little buffer of 300. But that is the max you take out of your savings account if you do even need to take it out. Because you know you're going to be negative 160. One thing that sucks is having an unexpected bill on top of knowing that you're going to be low at the end of the month. And then you go negative. And then you have a fee to pay. That sucks. So been there done that got the t-shirt not doing it anymore so for you you're going to have that buffer and then you're going to assign the amount of money you want to go to your emergency fund and how much you want to go into your Roth IRA so you can still build wealth even though you might feel like you don't have that much to go towards it that's how you get it started and for example let's say we kept this up all year you would have $9,900 for this year going straight towards your savings. Not all of it's gonna be in your savings account, some of it's gonna be in your Roth IRA, granted, but it's still really cool to know, okay, I'm gonna have 2,200 in my Roth IRA that I've invested, it's obviously gonna grow from there. Um, and then your regular savings, you're gonna have 3,300, and then in your um, emergency fund, you're gonna have 4,400. So a little can end up being a lot. Now, if you keep this up for years and years and years, like I have on this spreadsheet, you're gonna stack up a lot. And your your the idea is your salary is gonna increase over time. It might be percentage by percentage, but it's still gonna increase over time. And that's good to know. Don't worry about these up here. I just haven't filled the rest of this out. But And the thing is, you want this number to be as high as possible. And you want this number to be as low as possible. Typically, this is gonna be the biggest chunk. Like this is gonna be the biggest number. Like if I spread this out to every single month, this is what you would do anyway if you had this spreadsheet. After you figure out how your months are going to go, you're going to go all the way over here. Boom. Everything is auto filled out. Boom. And let's also spread this out so we don't look like crazy over here. So you're taking home $53,328. You're spending $43,428, but you're saving $9,900. That's the idea of the zero based budget. The idea is all of your spending ends up being zero, but that doesn't mean your bank account has to be zero. It just means that 
you're prioritizing your money and you're making sure that your money is going where it should go. So if you're going to prioritize saving, it needs to actually be prioritized. You may not be able to do it in the first half of the month, but you can definitely do it in the second part of the month. And um, that's how I do it. There's more to this spreadsheet. Uh, I will not go over it in this video, but basically this is just your budget right here is the tracker. So this is where you put all of your actual expenses. And then what this does is it's a, it's an entire thing that compiles all of your income, all of your expenses, and all of your savings into one. And it shows you what you uh, budgeted versus what you actually tracked. And there's gonna be these cool little circular graphs in here as well. And there's a little toggle button right here where it shows February. Well, it shows all the months, but in this case, February. So right now, this is showing you what you're expecting. These are your expectations to the right all right in here and then this tract over here when you put uh information in this one this is going to populate and then you'll see some graphs and that's going to show you your expectations versus your reality but it's important to do it like this because we're going to go back to the budget planning sheet it's important to do it like this because if you have student loans or any sort of debt really you can say you know what i want to make this a priority over whatever and you can then start prioritizing it by saying, this is the time of the month where I have the most money. So I'm gonna put an extra $100 toward my student loans and I'm gonna do it automatically. I'm not gonna forget about it. My account's gonna be automated and then whatever else is left, I'm gonna spend. It's a little uncomfortable at first, but once you get used to it, it will do wonders for your life and you'll be able to save a lot more money than if you didn't do this and you'll be able to invest a lot more money if you, than if you didn't do this. And you'll be a lot more careful with your spending. You might even start taking out cash more, which then you'll be even more intentional with how you're spending your money because cash, once you spend it, it's gone. But when you swipe your card, your card's still there. And that's what you gotta be thinking about when you do this. Anyway, this sheet is gonna be downloadable here in the description. So just click the link if you're interested in it. It is 100% free. It comes with all those sheets that I just showed you. And I hope you got a lot out of this video. The zero-based budget, in my opinion, is 100% undefeated. But anyway, that's the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth. So you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.